All right, welcome back and welcome to episode 179 of Those Millennials Podcast. Today I'm your humble, grateful, extremely thankful host, K the Classic. I'm here with my nearest and dearest, my boys and friends in real life. Jesse's here. Jesse, how you doing? How's your mental health? How's your pockets? We're Gucci, man. We oh, get back. We, we, we switching get, places. We get we getting back there. We're getting back there. Okay. Yeah. Real, how's your pockets? How's your mental health? I like the hoodie, by the way. Thanks. Uh, we Gucci. <laughs> love it. Lovely, lovely. Uh, welcome back. Thank you guys for listening. Wait, 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 wait. Right, my How's your pockets? Oh, man, man. Come look it out, man. Uh, okay. Man, yeah, because so. y'all took shots at me last week because you said I'm a piece of shit because I don't never ask. You know? <laughs> not y'all. Not but y'all. I talk to the, but I talk to me, but I talk to the nigga every fucking day. And then you know what it is, too? Asking somebody, how are you doing? Here we go. It's so fucking tongue in cheek. Like nobody really cares. Like nobody you know, so it's like, no, but I genuinely yeah. care though. That's why I asked how you're meant how how are you meant I mean, nobody I mean if they like if somebody was to really rattle off like you know what they were dealing with, nobody would really give a fuck. I would like, tell you y'all, know? y'all my brothers, I would tell y'all how I've actually felt. Now the regular people, no. The, the people I don't wanna express, they don't know. You just get I'm cool, I'm good, everything's Good, oh, it's so tongue in cheek. That's why I say what's Gucci, man. Because if I really yeah, don't question. put you in the tongue in cheek class, man, you're not with them. But thank you, Jesse, for asking. Uh, I'm good. The best how I mean, I had a week off, I'm refreshed. Uh, today was my first day back at the nine to five. Uh, Vegas is a shit show as far as the strip goes, and we'll get to, I'll get to some F1 shit in a minute. Um, pockets. Uh, today are going to be good this weekend, probably low because it's by all the Thanksgiving food, you know, Thanksgiving is usually at the crib. So yeah, but everything, everything's up other than that, but thank you. Oh, I appreciate when I'm, I'm asked back. Um, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. It helps the pod grow. Um, if you're new around here, sub up, uh, if you're listening on Apple music or Spotify, please, please, please leave a five-star rating. If it's not five star, keep them to yourself. All right, so big week, big week as far as music goes. We're gonna get to the Draymond suspension as well, but Rail had a fun time on the strip last night at a podcast event, so I'm sure he wants to talk about it. It seems like Rail's always doing something, and um, you know, but that's you know that's what Rail does. Hawaii is Hawaii one weekend, uh, uh, Miami another weekend, live podcast, and then just just vibes. Keep going, man. And my my bad, bro. My Bro, I just be chilling. Um, I went to the Ryan Rosillo podcast. Ryan Rosillo works for the Ringer Network. Uh, he had a live show last night. Um, it was at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. It was a shit show down there because the opening ceremony was was going off as I was going down there. But it's actually I actually got down pretty quick, quicker than I thought it was going to be able to get down there from my apartment. So um, the show was awesome. He was awesome. You know, I was able to chop it up with him afterwards. Like I always credit him. Like, 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 um, he, he had this. I, I told him after the show when he was downstairs and we were taking pictures. Like, he has this moment. He talks about like, like he had a really bad like breakup from a chick, and he had no money, and I was uh, and I, I told him like, oh, hey, bro, like that, that shit that you you know you put out there, like that shit got me through like you know a dark time in my life. You know, like I was telling him, you know, so uh, he's somebody who I look to as a muse, you know, and I told him that I appreciate him, gave him his flowers, you know, and um, it was cool, good experience. He's such a dope ass dude, man, like uh, real shit. Low key, they almost invited everybody. In. Like it was such a like afterwards, like as the group was dwindling, they almost we almost bar hopped afterwards. I said, man, I got I got to get to work in the morning, <laughs> so so I thought I ended up tucking it, but um, Ryan, cool ass dude, him and his <clears throat> producer, so they're fucking. Yeah, that is police friends as well. To that like bar hopping, they is you know. No, nah, it was just it was just the producer, a couple other dudes. We was at the bar. We was at Jimmy Kimmel's um Jimmy Kimmel's bar, and um we was just throwing some um drinks back. But now nah, it was it was a couple. Uh, I know I know you're talking about, but yeah, but now nah, it was just the producer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it was his cut. producer. That's a deep cut. Uh, you have to know. <laughs> you have to. You have to know. But the funniest shit ever is the life, like live life advice, which I like. Is like a yeah, funny yeah. segment. I bet everybody. Those who don't know, uh, at the end of Ryan's pod, after every episode, he does uh, a life advice uh, segment where <laughs> a lot of it used to be just gym stuff and gym etiquette, but it's moved on to more other shit. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty awesome. So. Just a overall great night. We went. We wasn't. We was in there pretty fucking late. So, 
even hung out at the bar afterwards, even after he took pictures. He sat at the bar, kept it open, and bought a round of drinks. So, Vibes. dope as dude. All right. Uh, that sounds dope. I can't wait till we go to our live show that we're going to real in, uh, what, like two weeks? The Bill mm-hmm. Simmons podcast live out here in Vegas. So, that's supposed to be dope. Um, speaking of down here in Vegas and it being chaotic. So obviously uh, F1 is this weekend out here in Las Vegas. Um, For those who don't know, who are unaware, F1, which I found out is the most richest sport in all of sports. Mm -hmm. Come out. I want to say combined, but I could be wrong. Um, But it's one of the most wealthiest uh, sports as far as contributors and well, let me ask somebody. We gotta add. You gotta think though. Like their sponsors are the Ferrari. Yes, the I know. McLaren. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know. Um. So in saying that, for some like this, so that today, right? I was literally driving on the strip, delivering, right? And when I tell you, I can spot out people that were here for F1, and I don't want to be disrespectful, uh, to these people, to these, I'm just gonna call them foreigners, to these people that are clearly not from Las Vegas who are all, from all the villains from the James Bond movies. countries. Um, <laughs> they, you can spot them for many two the reasons. They were all dressed the same. It was mm-hmm. real. So real knows it was overcast out here in Las Vegas today. Right. Yep. These dudes, again, a lot of them were dressed. Now they were all not dressed the same, but I would say about 70% were dressed the same leather jacket. On. Le- some, some of them leather jacket opened up sunglasses, uh, either whatever racing car team was under their shirt, like you said, Ferrari, some Audi. I saw some literally cool Mercedes Benz ones, and fat Cuban. Like they're like yeah, they're version of a track. Suit. Like you know they have money. Fat ass Cuban chains. <laughs> the version of a, like a track suit. Yes, uh, it's like a leather jacket or like yes. the team jacket. Just, and I heard these motherfuckers party different. I got a couple parties I'm supposed to be going to this weekend. I heard these motherfuckers was, party different. If I was a scammer, it'd be up. <laughs> so I'm just leaving it at that. I'm, talk about I'm selling that. dime bags for sixty dollars on the strip yeah. right now. I just the, the amount of people, and then don't drive by to win. Just oh, anyway. But yeah, uh, shout out to everybody that's out here in Las Vegas. That's because they're shooting fucking shows over there. Like the wind got so much shit, but hotel occupancy. You know, <laughs> no, the wind always stay back. Don't do that. All right, so uh, we're gonna swing it back to Rail because last week, I mean, well, we kind of did with Rail. So Rail wasn't on the pie last week, guys, but Rail still managed to give us his picks via our, his social media. So he gave us his picks. So Rail, what did you end up going last week, and what are your picks for this week for uh, Rail's picks sponsored by Radio Shack? You know what I do. You know, I, this is what I've been doing. I go two and one every week, fifty six percent. Last week I gave you Cowboys minus seventeen and a half. Oh, wow. They won by a million. Oh, yeah. I gave you Browns plus six. They won the fucking game. I gave you Penn State, but fuck Penn State. <laughs> and the only reason why Penn State lost the game, if you really want to talk about it, is because they probably already had. You know, they probably was. You know, they probably had a couple extra video uh, hours. So. That's probably why Penn State completely won the they play. They was doing the Michigan? Yeah. Well, no. Penn State played Michigan. I'll so. play, oh, 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 you saying Michigan had a couple of hours ahead. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Michigan couple had a couple hours ahead of extra film on them. So, 2-1 and one again, as I do, I per usual. Smack in the books, 56%. This week, I'm going to go with a quick three-teamer. Also, I listened to an old pod, as I would like to do sometimes during the week. Mm-hmm. I had a, a one of my best unders for the year. I'm sorry about this, Jesse. Bills, 10 and a half wins. I had Bill, not even, I didn't say not making the playoffs. I had them under 10 and a half wins. I just told you, I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I got questions. Just, I don't know. I got questions. Now they fire, and then now, now they got a fall guy. Uh, and, and Ken Dorsey, you know, the fall that's not, guy. That's not a fall guy. He, he was bad. No, no, that's definitely a fall guy. Definitely a fall no, guy. He was bad. Definitely a fall he guy. Was, he was bad. De- he was definitely a fall guy. You watch um, that game. You watch that game. Why are we at fourth and one and doing the shotgun play? 
Why are we like he, he's bad? No, he didn't. We're running the ball he had well. Money on the game, Jesse. Yeah, money. Uh, on the we're game. running the ball well. Let Let's go ahead and just throw it eighteen times straight times and not do. No, he doesn't know what he's doing. He didn't know what he's doing. He didn't get a good flow of the game. I'm not sitting there saying it. That game was his fault. There was a lot of drops. There was obviously Josh Allen's turnovers, but he also didn't understand. Like he doesn't understand game flow. He doesn't. He his. You know, Dan Orlovsky said it best. He sends people in motion for no reason. There is no, he doesn't have any deception in his play calling. He uh, calls the same plays and leaves Josh Allen with very little, you know, the route trees for these receivers are bad. Everything was a tight pass all the damn time. So he wasn't, he wasn't great. And to me, it just goes to show how good the team actually ha- is in his with his limiting what they what they could do now it not said that they're not winning so is it all his fault no we had a bunch of turnovers and we and then we make a crucial mistake at the end of the game so that ain't all on him no it's not it's not all it's not all all Kim Dorsey fault but but Josh Allen has a lot to do with that but I'm gonna get to my quick, quick three picks yep um um, so this week I'm gonna go with another three three banger. Uh, Utah on the um, pick 'em. You can get Utah plus one right now for at Arizona. Utah's playing good. They've been consistently good. Arizona just got good, and I think Utah's going to be able to dominate the line and be able to actually win this game. So I might sprinkle on the money line. I got the Raiders plus fourteen. Raiders Raiders are playing well. They're playing Miami this week, Tua. I'll even know that Tua's uh, the offense in Miami plays well at home. I just think that the Raiders are going to be able to at least make it a decent enough game to cover two scores because two scores is a lot in pro football. And then right now I got the Cardinals plus five. I just don't trust the Texans at home. Texans just got good as well. C.J. Stroud is the truth. But, see, also Kyler Murray looked good last week when yeah. in that win. And so um, five is a lot of points. You can buy some assurance in all these, like they advise. You can buy two points, buy that five up to seven, buy that uh, 14 up to 14 and a half with a hook, and even buy points on Utah. So you can buy insurance in all these, but I go two and one every week. Two and one last week. Cowboys big money. Browns big money. So Dope. Um, there's no really good games this and, and the, this is a perfect spend time with family Sunday besides the Sunday night football. Obviously. Unless you don't have a family. And I mean, not like Sunday night football, so Monday night I'm, football. I'm getting sorry, down Monday on everything. Football. Monday night football. No, it was a good, it was a good game tonight. It's a good Monday night. No, I'm saying, I, yeah. So the Thursday night game was, tonight's game was good. It didn't end up good because we had injuries. But, um, and then Monday night football is like must see TV, right? It's a good weekend for me to make a lot of money on the books. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're going to get to not list because not list is packed. And then we're going to, uh, get to, um, some Grammy nom- no- uh, nomination, which these two really don't care about the Grammys, but we're going to run through some of them real fast. And then maybe we'll have time for a quick Lakers corner and for me to shit on the Clippers. All right. So number one on the not list, uh, real quick, uh, I want to give a big, big, huge, Shout out to probably the one of the hardest working actors in show business right now. Uh, so big news. Uh, number one on that list, Pedro Pascal has been officially hired to be Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. Um, oh, they made it official now. It's official. It's official like a whistle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I'm saying he's one of the. I'm. 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 I'm just saying it. He's one of the hardest working men in 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 the show in in movie in in Hollywood right now, because not only is he gonna be doing the Fantastic Four, which we all know when you join the MCU, it is a large, huge overtaking of your time and everything. But he's also doing The Last of Us season two, which they just recently started shooting again. Gladiator two, which he'll be starring in. Uh. Which I didn't even know Denzel Washington's in the movie. This show, this this movie called uh, Weapons, and it just got announced yesterday that they're about to start moving forward with season five of The Mandalorian. So I was wondering, this is how my mind works. When I saw this man had all these jobs, I almost looked at his 
uh like personal life to see if he had like a bunch of big mamas if he was like some child support shit going on with him <laughs> and i shouldn't that's how my mind went i was like yo like why is he working like this so hard no nah, but all jokes aside that is that uh, i mean besides how they what they did in multiverse uh in the dr strange multiverse of madness which you know had mixed reviews uh i thought them casting Jim was a really good dope call for them casting him as Reed Richards in that universe. But Pedro Pascal has literally knocked every role he's had recently out of the park. Um, uh, so I think this is a really, really, really good hiring. So, and I heard he had a hand in hiring the other, uh, he had a hand in hiring the other uh, three members of the Fantastic Four too. So I think that's, I think that's fly. You guys have anything to say? No, moving on. All right, cool. Number two on the not list. Great choice. Uh, huh? So just a great choice. Great choice. Uh, number two on the not list, staying in Marvel. Um, I went to go see the Marvels last weekend. Uh, it was, I, I enjoyed it. I know people, uh, well, I said on this podcast yesterday, well, uh, last week when it, just, it was Jesse and I that it was projected to do, be the worst uh, box office numbers in in Marvel history, and sure enough, it was. It did not do well in the first week uh, in the box office, but it still has a really good Rotten Tomatoes and a really good audience score. I like I said, I enjoyed it. Um, I just again, I blame some of it on the strike that was happening because um, of lack of marketing or whatever, whatever. But I enjoyed the movie. Um, but yeah, that's just one to get that out because. I enjoyed it. I thought the movie was solid. I, to me, I don't even like. I think I said this in in uh, in the pod, Jesse, that I don't remember what phase the MCU's in. Phase four, phase five. I don't remember what phase we're in off the top of my head. But the Marvels to me is probably the third best movie in this phase, and which probably says a lot about the phase that we're in right now. Because I think it was better than the Multiverse of Madness. I think it was better than, um. I think it was better than uh, Ant Man. Not that much better than Ant Man, but I think it was better than Ant Man. Quite me, I do. Um, the no, only I'm just saying you you really picking at the bottom ones. The, the I'm, bottom. I'm ones. just saying, but I just the only movies I don't think it was better in this phase. I don't. It's not. It's it was not. Oh, and uh, I think it was better than the Wakanda Forever. Um, wow. Movie, look, I'm just saying, bro. I'm wow. Just saying. Um, the only movies wow. I don't think it's better than in this phase. I don't think it was better than. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and I don't think it was better than I'm blanking off one. Oh, Spider Man, the uh, the I always forget what home it is because it's No Way Home, Far Left home. home, huh? What's whatever whatever the recent one was with with the, that one. That Far one. from Home, Far from and, home. Yeah, sure. whatever one he was home, the last Spider Man. I, I I think that one was better. But other than that, I think I think we're good. All right, uh, no. forever. Wow. What? <laughs> yes. It's don't, not. Don't, that's don't, that's don't, asinine. Don't make this a race thing. I'm, just, I'm not I'm making a race thing. I'm just telling you. And it, I I haven't seen it, and it, I know for a fact it's not better than Wakanda Forever. Okay, bet. Hey Amen. Bet. Uh, number three on the list. Uh, this is going to be our first music topic, and it's probably going to bleed into a lot, a lot, a lot of music. Um. All right, so this happened literally in the last two days. So Beyonce is reported reportedly in talks to headline having a Las Vegas residency at the Las Vegas Spear, the same place you two are at currently. As soon as you two is done with their residency at the Spear, uh, apparently Beyonce is in talks to have her residency at the Las Vegas Spear. Um, okay. So Beyonce is apparently her team is asking for 10 million to produce the Divas high tech stage show, sources say. Um, I think that would be phenomenal. I think this is a direct um, what's the word I want to use. I think this is I think I, I want to give Usher his flowers because I think stuff I mean the spear made it possible but I think having a uh, 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 artists of Usher's caliber paved the way for something like this on this scale to happen, and you could say Adele as well, uh, somebody like that as well. Adele, too. Britney Spears, Britney Spears, but somebody like Beyonce coming mm -hmm. out here at least and looking at the spear to just 
want to have a residency out here and be out here for who God knows. Y'all doing a lot over there. Y'all are doing a lot over there. Y'all about to get another a baseball team now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, soon yeah. enough, you're going to get a basketball team. 2025, 2026, hopefully. There's a lot happening, man. A lot happening a lot in Las happening. Vegas. A lot, lot, lots happening in Las Vegas. Um, but yeah, what y'all would like to see. Gonna... And huh? people are starting to move their productions over there too. Trying to yeah, move, yeah, they're moving studios and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. I think you told me about that, right? Yeah, yeah. you told me. about Mark that. Mark Wahlberg is building something out there. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg's trying to build a, a Hollywood out here. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's, bro, that's the only way Jesse said he's moving out here. If they, if Mark, Mark yeah. Wahlberg moved to Hollywood, if he, if he make Hollywood Junior out here, he Jesse said he's on the first thing smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would prefer to go to Atlanta, but uh, <laughs> Atlanta, Atlanta, I heard that things going down over there, and I'm not right, right, right. You know. Um. All right. So, sheesh, I'm kind of blown through these. I like it though. I like it. I like it. All right. So let's just go ahead and get to one of the ones we talk about. So, uh, Drake and Cole announced their uh kind of sort of slash joint tour uh late last week um <clears throat> it's called what are we gonna call it it was all a blur slash um big as the what tour even though it's not really a tour um i don't even yeah uh, i don't even know i could tell this just came together over like yeah they drinks with remarketing what he already was doing yeah, so move. it's a good move. Now you're gonna get people to move, like buy. You're gonna get a bunch of out of towners and stuff. Yeah, so for those who don't know, um, he's not. They're not doing any big, big venues. Uh, they're doing like smaller, medium sized venues. Um, uh, well, I something was up when they was going to Buffalo, New York, but not the rest. Of, like, yeah, yeah. I think they got one in Long Island too. I think if I remember off the top of my head. Um. And uh, the last four shows don't have Cole. I think I see. Yeah, I saw. So the flash. So what I heard and I read up on is that during the it was all a blur tour, uh, there were some dates that Drake missed for whatever reason, whether it was his voice, whether sickness or just stuff out of his control. So I heard that a lot of these places are just makeup dates for 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 those. And then obviously. Uh, he's bringing Cole to some of these dates, but like, again, the last four dates on the calendar, J. Cole is not uh, supposed to be there, I, I believe. So, I think that's fly. And then obviously, he dropped the visual. They dropped the visuals to um, first person shooter, which is dope. Which got high praise from everybody. I, I have yet to hear yeah. or see anybody it's that. Fun, yeah, it's but, a fun. It's a fun music video. Yes. Yeah. Old school days. And- yes. It's high product. And, I mean, obviously, a lot of you know, great a lot of CGI, a lot of yeah. But it was yeah. fun, like you said. It's a fun uh, music video. Music video, yeah. yeah. I would say this though, and this is again, this is how my mind works. If you're Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar, right? <laughs> this is how my mind works. <laughs> I'm just telling I'm you how my mind works. This. If you're K Dot, right, and you at mm-hmm. home, right? And you just chilling, right? You at home and you see this bullshit and you like, look at these niggas. You not, you not, you not like, look at these corny ass niggas a little bit. No. Well, you're the one that's thinking that way. You got, you got that. I'm just, I know these niggas are competitive, yeah. so I'm just saying. <clears throat> Rail, are you with me? You don't think K Dot sitting there like, look at these corny niggas? I don't. No, yeah. I don't, because I don't think Kendrick thinks like that. Okay. Me either. Well, According to a lot of people, Kendrick and Drake have, I guess, passive aggressive taking shots at each other for years. Um, yeah, they said that a while back. Yeah, it's, they they they've been, been off a they've while. been circling each other. Obviously, Cole is kind of cool with both, so it's not that way with Cole. But they says it's you know. Drake and Kendrick kind of have a little, you know, I don't know if it's real. I don't think it's real anything. Just competitive, you know, stuff back yeah. and forth. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just, I just thought if I was Dot, maybe I'd be like, hmm, look at these corny niggas a little bit. I mean, nah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not important. It's something that's not like, oh, look at these niggas. They doing Again, what? Maybe this is how my mind works. His name got mentioned in there without even being in the song. 
Yeah, yeah, but he again it, the song is supposed to be just I think celebrating I think yeah. but, but what I'm trying to say is this his name's getting mentioned when it's supposed to be a song about bragging about how hot you are in the game. His name still gets mentioned. So it's not like these niggas is just talking about themselves or saying it's just them two. Yeah. J. Cole acknowledges Kendrick is the top like who, who's the hottest me? Yeah. Drizzy, Drizzy J. Cole and me, like, or K. Dot and me. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it's like, he, what's there to feel like, oh, look at these niggas or anything? Like, and no, like, he, not like, like, he just got one up on him. That's what I think. I don't know. I don't that's, know. How, that's how my mind went. I'm sorry, but it's cool. Um, all right. And then obviously tonight, uh, reported early uh, earlier this morning. It's reported that uh, we're. I mean, I think it's happening. We're gonna get scary hours three. Um, which is a was a surprise, which is kind of weird for a lot of levels because, and I think it's kind of fucked up on Drake's part because a lot of music is dropping tonight, and he knows if he drops tonight, he's literally gonna take the shine off of. A lot of artists that are dropping. Well, usually scary hours is only like a couple of songs though, so we might need what's it? I have, you know, the tra- songs I have the track. Oh, yeah. I have the track lost. The uh, one it's six songs. All right, mm-hmm. so the scary hours track list for right now is six songs. It's one. The first song is called Red Button. Second song is Stories About My Brother. Third song is The Shoe Fits. I think that one's about. Uh, that one might be about a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 Joe Budden, watch. Uh, Wick Man, Evil Ways, and You Broke My Heart. Ooh, we know what it was happening when You Broke My Heart. But th- there's a lot of music ahead. dropping go tonight. Ahead mute myself. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself on this one. <laughs> um, all I'm saying is this, man. I think for me, I think it, I think it's dope. Well, let me let me get with the negative first, and then I'll talk about why I think it's dope. I think this clearly says that whatever everybody said about his music, he had a problem with because when you put out a new project, you're literally stepping on your current project that's been out. What? How many weeks? Four weeks? Three weeks? It hasn't been a month yet. It hasn't been a month yet since uh, all Fall of the Dogs been out. You're literally going to be taking away streams for the people that still streaming that song still, you know, because people, you know, listen to albums and songs late. I'm pretty sure it's been a month. I don't think it's been a month. It's been close to a month, though. So like four weeks is basically a month. So, you know, you're probably right. But you're stepping on, in my opinion, when you drop an album so quick, you're going to be stepping on your last current album because people are going to be running to your new album. Right. Um, I also think it's messed up on a lot of levels so i mean this to me well so before i get to that i think this kind of proves joe and what a lot of other people were saying was right that i think hopefully this is the one that we get the bars i think it is this so apparently you know we got the the drake saying that he was going to take a break and literally a week after he's going on another even if it's not a major major tour he's going on a medium tour with j cole and then he dropped a whole nother project where it was where supposedly these songs were recorded in the last five days. That doesn't sound like a break at all. But he told us he was going on a break, but that does not sound like a break. That's literally the opposite of Seth. Close to Ja ruling himself. <laughs> um but just the same, I'm gonna name some songs, I'm gonna name some albums and some stuff that is coming out today that he's literally gonna take the shine of because none of these people expected Drake. No, nah, he's not going to take that much shine. It's only eight songs. Everybody else going to be able to listen to every, if, if something else is worth dropping. So along with Drake, Scary Hours three dropping tonight. Obviously, we're going to get to the Andre three thousand new blue, uh, new blue sun that's coming out tonight. Andre still Wayne, Trump change. Welcome to uh, welcome to Kylie Grove comes out tonight. That'll get listened to last. Uh, <laughs> uh, Little Dirk and all the family nightmares in the trenches come out tonight. I know Rail's going to mm. be checking for that. It's a compilation. Uh, Earth Gang comes out tonight with the album. Wait a minute. I know um, Earth Gang came out tonight. Tory Lanez, I don't give a fuck. Alone at Prom Deluxe. Go ahead to the next song. 
I'm gonna be listening to Tory Lanez uh, alone at Prom. Alone go ahead, at Prom go ahead, is a go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and take next more track. songs. Go ahead, go ahead to the next track. <laughs> So those are the albums that I think and E40 has an album coming out. And then there's a whole bunch of singles coming Fonzarelli? out. Fonzarelli? Oh yeah, I'm getting I'm getting the yeah, Drake. I mean Drake might have to wait because I kind of know what it is now. Like he's not for hip hop heads, I might have I mean Danny Brown's dropping. Danny I'm Brown. Looking forward yeah. to, I'm looking forward to that. So I mean it's gonna be a good music weekend, gambling weekend. One so. of my problems though, Rel, guess who's back as an executive producer on Scary Hours Three? The nigga he was talking shit about on the Joe Budden podcast? No, Kevin Wayne Durant. Wow. <laughs> wonder, no wonder his sons yo, can't get above 500. Yo, 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 Iman, tell your boy to worry about Devin Booker and Bradley Bill staying on the court and stay out of the fucking executive chair. Tell him to worry about them staying on the court. Anyway, sorry, Iman. He's just moving on to his next career path. He's slowly diving in there. You I know. know I, I'm just talking shit because you know I feel up about Kevin Durant. Yeah. <laughs> just talking shit. He's, he's telling you basketball ain't everything. I'm, I'm with you. I agree with him. He ain't just, good enough. All right. So I don't even know what number that was on that list, but uh, four or five. Four is like four. All right. Staying in music. What we're going to be talking about. I talked about it briefly. I brushed over it. Andre 3000, literally two days ago, announced out of the clear blue sky that he's going to be, he's dropping an album with what we've been waiting for. The streets have been waiting for three stacks. We was excited. We was like, oh man, one of the greatest, most creative rhyme makers and people that put metaphors together is coming back out and he's dropping an album. When is it coming? He's giving it to us Friday? Bet everybody was excited. And then, and then, Jesse, what did we find out what about this album? <laughs> it's going to be fluted up. It's going to be fluted all over the place. You know, you know, it's going to fluke that thing. It's going to take us to the park. Oh, it's going to take us across the street. He go, you know, what I'm saying oh, he go, he go, he gonna break us down. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he gonna chill. We gonna mellow oh. out. He did it to this. And Just I took it. screenshots. So I got receipt. I got receipts. A lot of y'all niggas was hating. I was, yeah. was. It was. It was so much hate on the internet when they found out it was no bars. There's not even drums on this album. Yeah. There's no drums on this album. There's gonna be nothing but flutes. And I got the track list. Have you, uh, real? Have you guys seen the heard the track list of these songs? You want to hear the name of these oh, songs? No, this I is heard. great. I have it. You're ready. Okay. I heard them. One of them remind me of myself. <laughs> All right. So track one. This is the funniest one, or the second funniest one. The name of the song is called "I Swear I Really Wanted to Make a Rap Album," but that, but but this is literally the what this is literally the way the wind blew me this time. That's the name of track one. <laughs> Three stacks. Three stacks. What? I like that. I like that. <laughs> track two. I'm sweating. This is, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the slang word pussy rolls off the tongue with far better ease than the proper word vagina. Do you agree? <laughs> That's track two. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to hear flute. That <laughs> I can't up. wait to hear this because I'll be trying to put together. Like, why did he choose the flute? <laughs> why up. did he choose the flute for that? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, I come out with a pussy dance too to this oh flute. My god. Track three. Mm-hmm. That night in Hawaii, when I turn into a panther and started making these low register pondering tones that I couldn't control. Shit was wild. That's track. Oh, he took sex man. He took sex man. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Oh, I'm great. Oh, man. Um, oh, I'm not going to read all of them. There's only eight, but I want to read this one. There's, there's one more. Uh, One, two. So I said, this is track five. What if it is a what if it is a rap album? What if he he's does just, a he's, double? I'm thinking it's not. Nah, it's really he's really not because he did an interview talking about it. he he did an interview and he yeah. Said, I just not. I know. 
But I thought I thought the same thing too. I was like, what if he's pump faking this? What if he's doing one of these? But, <laughs> till um, you finally get. Uh, I just want to read this one. Ninety-three until infinity and Beyonce. That's the name of a song, and he had to literally ask Beyonce to ask put the, put her name in the name. In track you know title. Said, yeah, you gotta, yeah. Look, man. Okay. I I love artists creation. Speaking from somebody, see, Jesse gives me grief. I'm documented. I'm documented. When Nelly went and went to do country, everybody hated it except me. I was like, dope, go over there and do that. If you do it well, fly. He's a Nelly fad, y'all. <laughs> it's so like Dirk doing country too. Dope. I think that's hey, hard. Where I listen to all my life, it sounds country. <laughs> all my life. When, when SZA started doing alternate slash rock music, I said, if it's done well, dope, fire. People didn't want to hear that. I like when art, when, when Drake, Went to Afro Beats. Oh, come everybody on. hated it. Uh, what did I stand? He, I said, go, it's good. It's he, just took, he just took it and tried to make it seem like nah, nah, I ain't gonna get started with you. <laughs> you and then I you like just, when and then you just skip I, over Yay. You skip oh, over Yay. There's much, but first off, but the, the disrespect for Afro Beats, like there's much better Afro Beats music. No, 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 that's really 100 there. Yeah. It's not just. And keep in I mind, I like, I love the song with him and Rihanna. It's like by the Afrobeat people that are really good Afrobeats. So, like, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I, I never Afro really beat. liked, like, no, I never no, really no. liked Burner Boy, or I never listened to, I never listened to. It. I didn't say I can like him. I never listened to Burner Boy, but I kept singing that. Um, it's your time, baby, sitting on top of the world. That, and yeah. I was like, who is that? That's not, that it, that's not even that. That's not even. Got way better no, but I had to go back after that and listen yeah, to old Burner Boy. I was Burner like, boy now I'm on. Now I'm on a Burner Boy tip. Now, now I can't get off of it. Now yeah. I'm like, damn, I, I missed out. I'll be honest with you. I'm late to the party. You know, bringing drinks. Afro Afro show up. Is, it's been yeah, yeah. Afro Beats is hard. It's been hard, yeah. and it's been. David O, we got Wiz Kid. Those are the big names, but we, big got names. Plenty. we got plenty. Burner Boy is the one. I'm showing up late to the party, but I'm bringing drinks. I'm like, I said, I was, I was never like, okay, but I kept singing that fucking song, and it was stuck right, in my, my head. My point is, I enjoy when the crew, when the creative people do creative shit. Same thing with again, you know, y'all know how I feel on Yay, so I'm gonna give Yay's flowers. I, I think it's, I think it's fly. So uh, you think I'm not gonna listen to this Three Stacks flute album? I'm a hundred percent listen to this this three stack. But I mean, I I mean he's a creative, so you know I would listen to because he creates sound. He doesn't play on it. I'm gonna be curious where he takes this. You know he's and he does somebody like the last time he rapped was on Kanye West's album. So well, uh, the last time he rapped was on Kanye West's album, Life of no, the Party. No, it wasn't. Yeah. He did it. He was on. He's on Michael. Oh, you're no. right. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Then Michael came after that. Yeah, I forgot about Michael. But before that, it was it was it was he killed, he killed that yeah. verse on Michael. That song is nominated. He said he, 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 he said he ain't got nothing to rap about. That's what I just nah. Jesse. That's what I was gonna get nah, to. I was I like, he said he verse. had nothing to rap about. I, you like, can do you can do eight songs with just one verse. Yes, we're on Michael, your boy Killer Mike's album, which that song is nominated for a uh, rap song of the year. As it should be. Well, I think it should be the other song with uh with Dave Chappelle Dan oh, Run. Yeah, that run. was hard. Man, I'm trying to tell you. The way they intro into that hey, is look, run, nigga rich. run. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, nigga yeah. run, yeah. We'll get to it, but we we know who should win rap album of the year. Run. We 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 oh, know the one with CeeLo. Is that year. that's not the one with C is that the one with CeeLo? No, CeeLo's track is different. CeeLo track is well, like track two, I think. Right, Ooh, that will go hard. That whole album. Michael Poor, Michael Poor, some different to this album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts other than no? Oh, what, what are we talking about here? Uh, <laughs> uh, three, about, stacks, uh, three stacks, three stacks, flute three stacks. Oh yeah, man. I'm gonna listen to it, man. I, I, I'm a calm dude now. I've been looking for something a little different. I don't. Right. I don't need all. Rap, even though so I can eat an edible, chill, <laughs> and I'm just, just chilling, man. I've been chilling. I don't know, bro. I gotta, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, we'll man. See. Chance. 
give it a chance. I'm gonna give it a chance because it's three stacks. Yeah, I'm not gonna complain. But he said no vocals at all, though. No vocals. No, at all. there's no vocals at all. I'm, I'm gonna give it a chance. I'm give it a chance. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna give it a chance. Um, all right. Moving on. Let's uh, do I have anything else with that kind of? No doubt, stop smoking weed, y'all. No doubt, stop smoking weed. Oh yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's. Y'all got something to drink? I'll pour some out right now, dog. Just. I got my water. I... Yeah. Y'all got me? Y'all got me? Yeah, we were going to edit that, though. But, uh... I don't know. All right. All right. Snoop. Um, so Snoop, Snoop, Snoop came out and just ran out of the blue sky and was just like, I'm, I'm done smoking. Sp- yeah, I mean, look. If it's health-related, I understand it. I, I It has to definitely be health-related because he said, you know, talking to my family and all this, it's something health-related. You know what I mean? And... You just wish him for the best and you just hope that, you know, this is something that will help him in the long run. We don't want to see Uncle Snoop go, you know what I'm saying? So no. it, 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 he, he's making the best move for him. Definitely. But we can't pour one out for that. End, pour end one. of an error. Yeah. <laughs> end, of, end of an error. End of an error for sure. Um... I just was like, I just hated that people were like, oh, come on, Snoop, don't play. Like, if the nigga want to start smoking, let the nigga stop smoking. Like, yeah, just... I hate how niggas try to put somebody else, your, your priorities and <laughs> right. on somebody else. Like, you got to stop smoking weed because he did. Like, no, right? like, <laughs> whatever line up in your life or whatever you feel like, like, that's how I line up, you know? And he yeah. feel like this is the time for him. This is the time for him, you know? So. Definitely. Um. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> very, very interesting night in the NBA uh, two nights ago. Well, no, last night, right? It was last. See, I don't even remember when it happened. So, last night, very, very interesting night in the NBA. Uh, Draymond Green got suspended for uh, putting the full Nelson on Rudy Gobert. Two nights ago. Uh, so, for those who don't know, Rudy Gobert has really had a lot of just weird shit that's happened to him. He had. His teammate stole on him at one point. Uh, Kyle Anderson took a swing at him at the on the bench. Obviously, people his people still blame him for COVID uh, because literally As they he should. Did stupid little <laughs> Mike thing. As they should, you know. What I mean, they put he in... says they should. He, he did it. <laughs> he, he didn't take it seriously. Ignorance. He didn't take it serious. He didn't take it serious, Jesse. That's all I'm saying. I was like, "Were you over fucking around?" Look what. <laughs> At the time, nobody took it serious like that, though, Jesse. So I'm, he gets a little bit of a pass to me. I, I'm just just a little bit. I'm not shooting a whole lot of bell, but you're right. A little bit of a pass. The Americans <laughs> did. <laughs> Get the fuck up out of here, you stupid motherfucker. Not even two days later. Not even two days later. Rudy Gobert has COVID. Oh, the whole Utah Jazz have COVID. Huh. <laughs> Stupid motherfucker! Like I don't care if it was your fault or not. Like, just you just don't. Uh, I'm gonna fuck around. I'm Rudy Gobert, chocolate blue. Like, get out of here! Like, stupid motherfucker. Was that your friend? What the fuck was that? Oh my god, that nigga's in soccer blue. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want people to just hear us laughing. I'm sorry about that. This thing Jesse says soccer blood. Just real. This thing says soccer blood. Uh, like he's Pepe Le Pew. Um. Anyway. Um, that, that's Rudy Gobert. Yeah, Pepe Le Pew. Pepe, uh, yeah he really is the Pepe Le Pew in NBA. He is. Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> exactly. Just be nagging niggas. Like leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just that he Rudy Gobert is always at the wrong place at the wrong time. It's like, uh, so yeah, if you haven't seen it already, Google it. It's on YouTube. Uh, it led not only did it lead all sports shows, but it like I told Rail today, I was like, I didn't think it was gonna get that big to where I was gonna see Draymond Green choking somebody out on CNN, and it was gonna lead Good Morning America. That's when you know a sport has transcended. And it's gonna be bigger than it is. Like I said, when I was initially watching the game, 
I thought nothing of it because in my mind, I was like, oh, that's fucked up. I was like, damn, they lost Clay. They don't got Steph. I was like, the Warriors about to lose. So I'm thinking about the game. I was thinking about the game until other people started showing. I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess this is a big deal. It's it's always a big deal when my mom calls me and it's like, what what's up with your guy, Dream? Everybody's my guy to my mom. What's up with your guy, Dream? <laughs> Everybody's my guy. Everybody in NBA I, partner is my guy. It's always it been like such a big deal. Then they started doing slow motion and then yeah, they started doing the pictures, the still shots. And I'll just say this. Like we can talk about our own Draymond been waiting to do that to that nigga <laughs> for a while. He been waiting to oh, get Draymond that nigga boy. for a while. You yeah. listen to how Draymond talks about that man. He been waiting to choke that nigga and out. This is, and minute. this is why. And this is why Draymond should have got fifteen games. And this yeah, is so why Draymond's I, only got five games. So let me ask y'all the question. So Ray already said it. So you think the punishment? Obviously, Ray, you don't think the punishment was was harsh enough. I personally think Draymond should be in jail. <laughs> but, 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 that's, but that's me. Anytime you stalk and obsess over somebody for so long and you get an opportunity to do something bad <laughs> and, you, and you let out that much anger, you it's need to no go reason. to jail. There was you no reason go- for doing that. You could have tackled the nigga and it would have been, more, it would have been okay. Is, if you're a basketball <laughs> head and you know you know, like you know the backstory. You know when Rudy Gobert said that he cried after he didn't get selected for the All Star game, <laughs> and then Draymond Green at each other for years. Yeah, yeah. So like, so you know, and it's like when it comes to like, okay, like you could like not like somebody, but it's like clearly Gobert like is he's, he's not gonna fight Draymond. Like, you know what I'm saying? Opportunity. So so he had the opportunity. So it's like, but but Draymond, you let your hate boil up that much. You suck because you can't focus on scoring. They you don't focus on. Real, you don't he wanted real. He wanted to win that in season tournament game so bad. No, no, no. K dog. No, you Draymond, you don't focus on scoring. You don't focus on uh, on rebounding. I already know where you, you go. Here you go. You you, you, you don't focus. On nothing but being a hack at this at this point, and you're a thirty million dollar hack. And here's my thing with Draymond is that the fact that like you let it's like it's like you're if you if there's a line, why do you have? There's too many times. My grandma used to tell me, "Boy, if you get caught doing the same thing too many times, somebody gonna think that's what you're doing." You get caught so many times doing that illegal shit, you know, whether it be kicking people in the dick something it, it, it's Step something it it's always chest. it's always something but it's never draymond's fault you know what i'm saying that's why it's I always love, the narrative yeah i love steve kerr but what he said was kind of asinine and i'm glad he his comments today reflected that he was just like it was well des- it was deserved you know he kind of owned up to his comments yesterday my only interesting this and this is from somebody that subscribed to draymond's podcast Where's the pods, nigga? Where you've been going uh, through a whole that, lot this year so far. Where that, is shut up. the yeah, literally it's too expensive now? He getting paid now. Pod. Where's the, the pod? pod? Was bringing in money now and little side money <laughs> now, and now he got thirty million just to hack. Where just to hack for thirty for minutes? Trying to, exp- I'm, I, I can't wait till he tries to again. And then I'm, I'm a fan of Draymond, but I, I want to hear how he justifies what he did. There's no justifying it. There isn't, but I want to hear how he tries to. He knows. He tries to justify the the Jordan pull punch. So he's going to try to justify this. He just always at the wrong (laughs) place at the wrong time. And everybody's like, yeah, you need somebody like Draymond. Like, no, he's just a piece of shit and he fouls hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, yeah. I think Draymond's one of the best modern defenders. Yeah, like, okay. He used to, he used to be a great defender, but that was four fucking defender. years ago. Still he's not a great defender now. He's still nothing but a hack, he and he's a backpack for Steph. And it's true. He's year year like a fucking skewed category that because nobody plays defense. That's, you know, so that's, that's not true. The, the, it's a skewed category, like if Draymond Green, the Minnesota Timberwolves, hey, that, that, that motherfucker, that's, that's that that's motherfucker that. Rudy Gobert wanted twice, and then and both times in the playoffs got exposed. <laughs> it's literally a fucking skewed category. It's a skewed like it doesn't mean you're the best. You mean it doesn't mean anything to me. Marcus but Smart it, wanted, and then that you know what I'm saying doesn't Marcus mean it, it's a, now it's, it's become exposed in the playoffs. They're not putting. 
But I, all I'm gonna say is this: that Ben Simmons won it, that he had a bad back. He did not win it. Oh, did he not win it? They oh, no, Rudy. He was, in, he was in. He was in discussion. He didn't win it that year. No, no, no. No, he never won Defensive Player of the Year. He was in. He was but, in discussion though. He was in discussion. I mean, I, I, I. But all I'm trying to say is that he, now he's not that defender. But it's like he gets known more for he's other shit other than being defective. I mean, well, look, he's I agree. Percent still that defender. He's lost a step for sure. But yeah, I agree. But 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 it was him. But like I'm just saying, like between the stomping of the chest and the player, like there's always extra shit Agreed. that we don't I'm need. Agreeing. I'm not just what he did, but I, I agree. Better take away from what Draymond is. He's 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 not be, that defender he's anymore. Be, he's not that. He's not that, he's not that Draymond. Eighty five percent that defender though. That's a lot. That's a lot to me. I mean, I agree. Is a lot. I agree. Eighty-five percent of Draymond is still better than half, more than half of the NBA and NBA and defense. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I agree sorry. that he should have got like ten to fifteen games. I don't understand. Like, you think he should have got ten to fifteen? You know, yeah, because look, no punches I, were thrown though. He choked the nigga out. Like, I don't know what, what else is he supposed to do. Like, this nigga stomped on chest, kick balls. The nigga does everything but throw punches. And for, uh, clearly he's figured out a everything way around. But, everything. He does do everything but throw punches. That's, <laughs> that's, right. that's, that's, that's my that's, thing. That's, like, that was a good point, Jess. He does it. <laughs> I have yet, yet, Dre has yet to throw a punch. Oh, besides the one we saw that we wasn't supposed to see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like here's my thing about him is just one of those things where it's like he complains a lot. He he says so much about him, like oh this and that. But it was like you instantly like you can just look at the intent there, and it wasn't it wasn't to like stop a fight. <laughs> like it wasn't, who does that? Like no one he does that. Like that, that his seven fight games. Game like, in his actual off. Offensive game, and it's crazy <laughs> to me. I, told, like, I don't get, know if I told you. Uh, I don't know if I told Jesse or Rail this when I called y'all today. I was like, "We know that." I was like, "We watch pro wrestling." The face Dre made when he had <laughs> exactly. the that's the Triple that's H the face when he has. When he has the Triple H face when he has him in the headlock. Like, yeah, like, he grinded that shit in. Like that nigga was, was like, I, I seen that guy. I seen <laughs> Hunter make that face is. plenty of times. I've seen that face. I know that face very well when you choking somebody. Are you just trying to choke a nigga out. And Draymond realized was Steph not in the court. Like he realized, like nigga, I got no business being out here. I got no business being out here. Rudy, again, I don't agree with a lot of stuff Rudy says, but that was true to form what Rudy said about that. And this, and it's been that's what it looks like. Whenever Rudy Steph is not out there, it does seem like Dre tries. He he don't try to try to be out out the game too. And there was no Clay, and Clay was ready in a shooting slump. He's like, what am I out here for? I'm gonna set the screen for. I think Chris he Paul really like, jumpers. I, I really think he'd be like, "Yo, and I'm Andrew Wiggins, Michigan, Steph get to sit, and Steph get to sit down. I'm, I don't get to sit down too. Exactly. I'm on Steph's level. We are a package I, deal, Jesse. Exactly. We are a package deal. Dream is the only thing, but only thing I've ever seen somebody argue with the ref about how hard he fouled somebody. He's the only. <laughs> okay, so the reason why I'm saying the reason why I'm saying ten to fifteen games is because look, y'all gave Ja twenty five. Yes, Ja, and but you gave twenty five for public image, right? Yeah. Draymond's been doing this shit throughout his entire exactly. career, and the, la- the latest one. Is he's choking a nigga out? That is that is not a good look for the NBA. Even though it brought a lot of eyes to the game and it brought everybody, everybody talked about it. Something was in the water that day. Something was in the water because everybody water was getting, sure. been getting sure. some, some shit. Even AD thought he had balls for a second. Like, hey, man, but, no, we, we, no, we, we found out the next day. We get to that. We not on Lakers corner. We, <laughs> we found there. out the next we'll day. He gave him the Sabotis. Before so, we get to Lakers corner. Uh, <coughs> you guys hear or see what Patrick Beverly said? Yeah, nah. Okay, so Jesse, so Patrick Beverly, I don't know how fast he did this because it literally dropped the same night this happened. So I don't know if he immediately because he played that night in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. but he dropped the podcast that morning that obviously he recorded that night where he literally talked about how he was disappointed in Carl Anthony Town. So if you watch the video, Carl Anthony Towns was literally the first to the scene, I guess you can say, after Draymond had Rudy Gobert in the chokehold. What's Carl Car- Look, man, let me get this off first. After Carl Anthony Towns 
Carl Anthony Towns was the first to see it, and he did not, in Patrick Beverly's mind and in my mind too, he didn't have Rudy Gobert's back. And Aunt, 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 Aunt Edwards was there as well too. He, he called Aunt, he called, he called Cat everything. He called him a wuss, and he probably would have said a whole lot of harsher words. Cat is the star on the team. The nigga that's supposed to get choked out was getting choked out. So like he's supposed to break it up when cat and when so cat Jarell said himself. the same thing you said. He was like, What's cat gonna do? But I said this. I was like, Real I mean, Real and Jesse, y'all y'all both my boys. If y'all in a fight and I see you getting choked, Jesse, guess what I'm gonna do? No I'm gonna choke the dude that's choking you. Here's the problem. You're my man's here's the problem. If you the star of the team, right? If you the star of the team and yeah. me and Rel me and Rel are the ones that get like you see what happened. Draymond choked. It was Draymond that yeah. choked out Rudy Gobert yeah. when when Clay was just trying to get niggas up off of him, and he stayed back. If, if it's the nigga that's supposed to be breaking up the fight, which is Rudy Gobert, he's supposed to come in and be the enforcer, but he isn't. The and he had getting, a, the and enforcer then had no out. oxygen. Then, okay, and now I can't even trust you because you can't even be a real enforcer. Just, You're just big for nothing. Towns, uh, Jimmy Butler <laughs> has seen every neck, every turn where I'd be like, man, maybe Jimmy was wrong. Jimmy's been nah, right Jimmy, at we know Jimmy was right with Carl Anthony Towns, and it's freaking crazy. We know Jimmy was right. I want to, I want to drop some on y'all real quick. Uh, get y'all just a quick reaction. Hey, they say just now that. The F one race may be in jeopardy because the track is shot. Like, like, like it's fucking trash. Like, hey, like they really? just ran their first oh. practice race, and there was a pothole. They just had to stop the race. They just stopped their cancel race just now. Like the F one officials are like, we like they, they like this. They spent you know, all this money and all this time, bro. And the track is shot. So I'm just telling you, get, 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 yeah, just get throw that it's out been, there. It's too much money to be made. That's too much they're money now. They're gonna, they're gonna, gonna figure they're it gonna out. They're gonna change the tires and double down on they're this road closure tomorrow. They it, it <clears throat> rained out here yesterday. Like, but here's the thing, Jesse. Like, 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 like they're cl- oh, my bad. But they're, they're, they're like we're still driving on this actual track. We're driving on it. We're driving on it every day. They open it at they again. They close it so it's open during the day for people to drive on it. On but at five o'clock they close the strip and then obviously they probably do maintenance and try to fix whatever, whatever, whatever. But we we're still able to drive on Las Vegas Boulevard up until That's five wild. o'clock. That's wild. All because they want pretty photos of F one cars on driving past the, the fucking uh, 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 Bally's and not it's, I'm sorry it's not Bally's anymore Hershey, uh, Flamingo and 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 Treasure Island. Yeah, they said the whole track is shot though, so they said they got to fix a lot of shit very, before very, very, before, very before, before Saturday night. Uh, anything left on Draymond before we get to Lakers? <clears throat> All right, so Lakers corner. Uh, and so in the past, since the last time we talked about the Los Angeles Lakers, I think they went one and one. No, they've, they played three games since the last time we recorded. So they're probably like two and one. Let me give them their flowers. I think it was bit. two and one since, okay. yeah. Since the last time we recorded. Uh, yesterday they lost a very uneventful, uninspiring, besides LeBron James, um, game to. Oh, surprise, two. surprise. Uh, <laughs> To a team, for whatever reason, I mean, well, I know the reason. They just seem like they can't guard properly in the Sacramento Kings. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, they they have nobody to stand in front of De'Aaron Fox. The person that they're supposed to have guarded De'Aaron Fox. Well, I'm sorry. The two people that they're supposed to be having to guard De'Aaron Fox are hurt, which is Gabe Vincent and um, Bando. Um, and they won't play Max Christie right now because Max Christie got a lot of other issues going on right now. Um... <laughs> Uh, uh, for whatever reason, I, I, I've, I've declared this. AD didn't, I, AD admitted that he, he didn't play well. He played like shit. He only scored nine points, which is, that's what everybody wants to talk about. Surprise, I'm more surprise. About the, I'm more <laughs> concerned about AD, for whatever reason, can't play well defensively against these foreign bigs. Like, obviously, Joker is a different animal. Nobody plays well against Joker, but... For whatever reason, whenever, I mean, again, the stats already proved that he's having beaten Demonis Sabonis. I think he's 0-8 against Demonis Sabonis. For whatever reason, he has issues and trouble guarding Demonis Sabonis. I don't know if it's because Demonis Bones is lefty and he's just... Uh, it's because Demonis Sabonis is a real... Um, 
he's a real like you know he's a he's a real technical big man, and you know AD didn't come up being a big man. He started out like as a guard, so he's like used to guarding guards. Oh wait, that was like ten, eleven years ago. <laughs> Jesse's really distraught and is bothering my soul. My point is. <laughs> I, again, Joker is a different animal. So, but for whatever reason, AD cannot guard these foreign bigs. Like, it's um, it's it's crazy. I rather, I much rather have AD guard Joel and B because he does well against Joel and B. He does well against Giannis. Like those players that are like similar. Wait, are these are? are, are is this a back to back game that he plays those guys? No, you're, you're right. Not... It was a back to back. I mean, you're right. It was a back to back. Well, you know, he just he can't he can't do well two games in a row. That's, that's not true not, either, Jesse. You that's not in his contract. You go through his stats game by game. It is, it's he, in he his contract. Well. I cannot play well off the top of my dome. Real, how many games Don't have play me so far? Like in this eight, second ten, game. They play 10. Every team has played play 10 well. right, except uh, it's because one team. Every game, he's like, which no, one do you want? Two teams, play, four teams played tonight, so they probably played 11. But Do you want me to play well against these whack-ass Grizzlies, or do you want me to play well against the Lakers have played 12 games. They're 6-6. Six and six. Okay, Lakers have played 12 games. Out of the you 12 games, well against the Kings, you might play, well sit down right 80's now. 80s played nine good games. Probably great games. He's great played games. Nine, out of 12, he played nine I'm not. Games. Yeah, I'm not concerned about AD's performance last night. Yeah, yeah, it just so happened. It's on a back-to-back. Like, And everybody said he didn't play well against the Brian previous night. dropped a triple-double on a back-to-back, though. Yeah, that's very true. And it's year 21. <laughs> I mean, but at the same time, um, AD, 80s, like I said, 80s game is not a, a, f- a front piece of an offense. You cannot throw the ball to him and say, this is our best, this is our best offense. I don't believe that under no circumstance. No. He needs a point guard like LeBron. He, you know, he, and, and, and this is what it is now. Like you said, Jesse, earlier this year, like, yeah, well, you keep saying, like, you raw offensively. You keep adding muscle, putting on muscle, taking on muscle. No, nigga, this is who you are. You know? <laughs> you know? Like, like stop it tomorrow. This this the year. Like, I, I'm so sick of everybody tomorrow. How much they taking this year seriously. Like, nigga, as if I did not watch the last three fucking years of training camps with these motherfucking yeah. this whole AD tomorrow. Oh, I'm skinny. Oh, I'm buff now. I'm like, no, like, no, AD. This is who you are. Your offensive game is raw, and you can never polish it. That's fine. Yeah. But this is why we need well, the third. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. And I ask this question every single time. When the Lakers need a bucket and LeBron's saying LeBron's not in the game, what is like what is AD's move that it's like, all right, guaranteed bucket? Like, right, give me the ball. We need to we need to stop the pace. This is Crazy. something's getting out of probably, what is his move. Honestly, honestly, it's honestly, a floater. If he's a, if he's a, at a what first is a weaker defender. I would feel comfortable throwing it to AD to do a back down turnaround, you know, in the paint. You know, sure. if he's is so, the weaker defender because he he's a, he he's matched that. But, air ball the, one yesterday, but, but, he, but here's the thing though, I need a third banana because AD's game isn't consistent. <clears throat> we'll get to that. LeBron, you, you mean you mean a second banana? AD wants to be the third banana. It's just <laughs> yeah. he wants to step up. All right, so um, uh, we're not so AD played like poop but Austin didn't shoot well yesterday um but and they were still teasing us that like the game was competitive enough where I couldn't turn no I'm tired of this shit going down 18 and then trying to come back back at the game I I, I hate that I want to turn the game off so I'm with you so much energy like what I'm with you how do you expect to win this game is that the game plan we'll just you know we'll beat them down for three and a half quarters let them believe they're beating us without Vando and and Gabe Vincent Sack is gonna again maybe even with those guys Sack is gonna cause the Lakers issues um and Sacramento missed a whole bunch of open one thing like Malik Monk didn't even shoot well yesterday like Sack missed the 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 game like Mike Wilbon said at halftime Sack should have been up by like twenty five, and they were still in the Lakers, and but, somehow was still in the game. But here's the thing: one thing I determine about good teams if you play well at home, you got enough depth and enough pieces to play well at home. You should be able to at least be competitive in sack. That game got too out of hand too many times, and look at the little stat line the, at the end of the game. The, when the ball was tipped, it was stolen by De'Aaron Fox, and he got a three point play. That's how the game started. This is bad signs. Whatever reason, I said this too uh, earlier in the year. 
De'Aaron Fox, for whatever reason, he don't. Whenever he plays the Lakers, he turn up. I don't know what it, it is. It, it's just did. the Lakers. It's the Lakers. I don't know it's the what Lakers. It is. That, that ain't that ain't a De- De'Aaron Fox. Man. He's just, trying no, to bring back no. the rivalry. He's, not, he's trying. He's only Kings. He's trying to bring back the rivalry. He wants to yeah, put it to he, us every time. He don't even turn up like that against the Warriors, and they're supposed to be the the Warriors supposed to be the little brother. The Lakers and turn Kings up like that go. He grew Warriors up on Lakers and Kings. He De'Aaron Fox grew up on Lakers and Kings. I know, but for whatever reason. Darren turn up whenever he Steph is boy. Go, he turn up and it's like, yo, what you mad at? Anyway, because yeah, it's like knocking Steph out shots, boy, staring but... at the bench, staring at the crowd. It's just, it's just, just, it's just different. But anyway, so let's get to what we gonna get to before we get up out of here. Um, so it was a report from the Athletic that the Bulls are finally ready to hit the detonate button, uh, starting with Zach Levine. Uh, Zach Levine uh, apparently is closer him and his representation are possibly okay with the idea of potentially moving on and blowing up the, the Chicago Bulls situation because they look like they're not going anywhere and who know who who could have saw that coming no everybody wait everybody saw that coming um so let me ask you ask you uh let me ask I already know what Jarrell, Jarrell's answer so let me ask you Jesse because I don't think I've asked you directly this um anybody on the Bulls who would you would you trade some of the Lakers core pieces to add any some players from the Chicago Bulls and who would it be I mean I would <clears throat> DeMar DeRozan because he can get his own shot you know he's consistent with that and um when you need a bucket he's not he's shooting well up. this season but I think he put on that purple and gold armor I think he will I think he'll do fine um but I don't know I, there's just something about Zach Levine I don't I, I don't know his game doesn't contribute to winning is what I would say. That's that. That is the key. Like he can get you all the points, but it just doesn't contribute to winning. And he's really good if he's your. And it's crazy to say because this is a man that's making forty million dollars a year. Um, if he's your fourth option, then you're in good. Can that? That's heavy. Good. Third, cut it you out. Think, you think if he's your third option, you are right? He could be your two. No. And, so, and you're gonna win. It feels like at the highest level. If he's your two. two you're not gonna win. You put him with an actual two way defender, not Demar Derozan. You the Derozan. You put him with if a Kawhi. Two, if he's your two, he has to be paired with like Giannis. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like it's almost like a Dame. That's what I'm saying. Two, he can't yeah. be he can't be paired with like Luca. Nah, maybe that that might work. He can be paired with Embiid and Maxi. Daryl would do that, but I do. I I do like I I do like him potentially on the Sixers. I like him on the Heat. I think he's. I think he's a. Uh, I, I like the Heat, heat player. I think uh, the Heat would be a good choice. Who's the defenders around them? Three defenders yeah. around them. Yeah, I think he. So on the Lakers, so I'm with so uh, Rel and I have talked about this, but I would rather much rather have the Lakers do a Demar and Alex Russo trade. But the trades I've been seeing, they've been adding. Austin Reeves and I'm out. As soon as you add AR, we but no, them, we're hanging up the phone. Get, yeah, you're not getting Austin get, Reeves. I mean, that's what everything's gonna jump at get, first. Rui, you can get. <clears throat> um, I don't want to give him up, but um, if we're getting Alex Caruso, you can get Gabe Vincent. We're gonna lose some shooting, but Gabe hasn't shot well for us anyway. But he hasn't played enough games. So who knows? Well, I guess not even ten games run. yet, right? Yeah, that's, that's what you said. He has a thirteen games. Uh, that's what the shot was twelve be. games. That's what, he's played two games. Well, he played one and a half game. No, yeah, he's played two games, but Lakers have played twelve games. Yeah, yeah twelve games. If you say anything, well, like, and we, he's only played if two. If we get a, a package of Alex Caruso and Demar Derozan, and we don't, if we and we can hold on to, I don't want Alex Caruso though. Really, I don't trust that I back. Think, that's true. There, 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 oh, there's injury that. history there, but Alex Caruso, I, it's crazy because the Lakers had him. Uh, uh, he's one of the best guards slash wings in the game. He's he, he literally guarded Kevin Durant. Well, I mean, obviously, everybody was praising him the year he played. He, gu- he guarded Kevin Durant down the stretch, but he's one of the best guard defenders. He's perfect for players like De'Aaron Fox, the one that we have issues with. Uh, Steph, just he's a Swiss Army. I would just like to there go are after injury Caruso. problems, though, huh? I would just like to go after Caruso, you know. Yeah, so that's another thing. So people have been saying that Alex Caruso probably has the best trade value on the Chicago Bulls, which might surprise. Nine million dollars, yeah, two years. Yeah, his contract. 
It's just that back, man. That back, back. is yeah. I agree with you. But you already have back problems. It's a risk. It's a risk because yeah. yeah. he he stays injured. Um, he, you know, everybody talks about his shooting percentage, but he doesn't shoot like he takes like two attempts a game, uh, yeah. which is you know. His plus, plus on defense is way out much ways yeah, more see, than the efficiency. Yeah, he's a good floor general. Yeah. Plus on defense, he's he's a good. He's willing to take the risk for even with the back. Like I can load manage you until you, if it's not flaring, hopefully if, at the if, wrong if, time. I will say this: I don't, and I don't know what their timeline is to move, uh, or if their timeline is just hold on to. They're they're definitely going to get trade Demar because Demar is a. They don't want to lose him for anything. They have to flip Demar because he's a. Um, He's a uh, yeah, he's expiring contract. But as far as Caruso goes, um, I don't know what they're gonna do with them because they might just wait wait out for the highest bidder and just you know, I don't think I don't think Caruso is gonna fetch two first round picks, but he he's definitely gonna get one and probably something else with them. That's how good his contract. Oh, is. he can't get no two first round picks. No, 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 no. Dude, I don't even know if he'll get one. So he'll cut get that out. One. His contract is so good, he'll get one. I watch. All right. I don't know if it's first gonna be number? I'm not talking about lottery pick, but it's gonna be somewhere. He's gonna get a first round pick. Couple okay. seconds. All right. Uh, do you guys have anything else to add before we get up out of these out of this joint? Nah, man. Nah, man. Wait, Gucci over uh, here. Bro, thank you for the F1 update. I hope uh, I can't wait to to drive on that road and do a spin out and burn out on the road. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can we talk about this uh uh uh, what's his name? Zion. I'm trying to buy in. <laughs> Shit. Can somebody oh, explain what, what, what he's struggling to buy in on? I, I don't know because the team is literally built around him. Maybe not Brandon Ingram, but everybody else is there literally to help and lift Zion. They up. just have bad luck. Like the CJ lung collapse shit. Like, yeah. like you could never see the full version of this team. That's true. I just don't understand it. Like, but yeah, I, I, you his, just his tell quote everything. was like, like what? Yeah, like it just tells me you just doesn't like Willie Green. Here. Yeah, it, like Willie Green. It just tells me you don't want to be here. I don't think well, it has anything to do with upper management. I don't think it has any. I think he just doesn't want to be in New Orleans. I think he just wants to be in New York, and that's truly what it is. You like, it's too just, much. Still wants him like that? It's too much. Yeah, huh? it's too much. Zion, you fat, and you don't even do the shit you used to do. So. He's not shooting the same shooting percentages. Uh, he's not the same. Like, Bleacher Report tried to do the thing where there was like, Zion, two back-to-back Zion ducks. And I looked and I was like, oh, these ain't like what I yeah. expected. They was cool dunks, but it was like, they not Zion dunks. That the I nigga expected. heavy still, bro. <laughs> they not. They not. Like, I just, I'm, I'm just confused as to what he was talking about. Like, like I, it just, Anthony he Edwards sounds like he's really like, struggling. Yeah, like he's he sounds like he's really struggling. Well, what's going on? And I'm just like, it just sounds like you just don't want to be there anymore. Like, don't get me wrong. As a person that's like, hey, I, I don't I don't like the draft. I don't like the idea of you getting drafted to a team, to a city that you didn't ask to go to and all that stuff. I don't love that. But it's like, but, but but Jesse, but if that was the case, everybody want to be in LA and Miami. No, oh, I, I, well, what I'm gonna say is this is how they feel and can make it even. When you do come to the city, they do take care of you. You did sign the second contract, so it's just one of those things where it's like, dude, like it's, you haven't earned being able to um, force your way out. Is what I would say. You haven't earned. That's why he's on a non-guarantee. I think he has like a bunch of incentives. I don't know if it's a non-guarantee. That's probably the wrong. But I know he has a lot of incentives on games. He has a weight clause for sure. Yeah, Yeah, and it's just one of those things where I'm like, he has a lot of. And this team is stuck with you. This team is stuck with you. Like, and that's the one thing. The the little dirty secret is that if Zion wasn't there, that this team, like this team, already like has. Probably like the lowest attendance in the NBA. They like, should move to Vegas. Yeah, like I don't know. We don't what the we don't want the Pelicans. We want our own team. We want to start fresh. Anyway. Um uh all right, so real quick on the Clippers. Uh we've seen five games of this shit. This shit is a shit show. Uh I'm I think that they have reaped what they so I'm going hard. They've reaped what they sow. They deserve this. <laughs> James Harden. You're the system, right? 
uh, I think as soon as you became a Clipper, your usage is at 18%. Uh, you still don't shoot catch and shoot threes. Your defense is still awful and atrocious. You play uh, well in Denver. Don't do that. You play well in Denver. Atrocious. It's a train wreck. You got to say. You got to say. You got to say. Don't do that. Kawhi Leonard well is, Denver. So Kawhi Leonard's been playing more games, which we all been encourages, but he has not been playing this playing uh, as well. He's the probably the second best player on the team right now because Paul George is the best player, and the reason why Paul uh, Kawhi Leonard has been playing so bad, uh, and then it's, look. Kawhi has been trying to play these games because obviously the Lake, I mean the Lakers, the league has this sixty-five game incentive. That there's also those contracts almost all up. All these, all these, he's also trying to play because he wants another big contract. Mm-hmm. But his body is wearing down. That's why he was low managing. Has, and now he can't he low manage knees. how he wants to low manage this year. And he it's, has it's knees. literally showing. It's literally bearing fruit on the court. It's literally bearing fruit. He does not look the same. He starts off games hot and then he wears down down the stretch. It's happened three. That's the games biggest that issue that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about how Kawhi Leonard is not able to play. Like again, the the Lake. So the Battle of L.A. Right, the Laker game. Kawhi Leonard started off like a house of fire. I was scared as shit. I was like, oh, so we about to get waxed. And what happened down the stretch? He just wear down. Did them them mid range jumper? He wasn't getting as high as it was. As high as I don't know if this is gonna last forever. I don't know if it's gonna last for a long time, but I'm loving watching it. <laughs> loving to watch it because these motherfuckers think we just gotta go get everybody. Go get everybody. Now you just you destroyed your team. Man. You literally ruined your team. And then I don't, it I don't think they ruined their team. They gave up fucking but ba- it's not about who they fan. gave up. It's just there's no chemistry. Like, there's no chemistry. They're trying to build it on the lie. It, I will say this, it was worth the risk the team was gonna be this way regardless and just didn't make sense Look, didn't make sense it was worth the risk based off the, i just feel like it was worth the risk based off their team their team had Filio and, and, and jesse and philly over there smiling grinning like we i mean because tyree's max he took yeah because they got rid of james Harden. he didn't fit their system yeah. but i think on this team there is a there there is a situation where he he does fit if they if, if Kawhi can just accept being a defender and not focus on scoring what? as much. Why would Bro, he do- did you just not hear what Why we just said? Why I feel like he's the best. There's three players on that team. And if you add Russ, I, I guarantee you, if you ask everybody, put troops in to everybody. Kawhi I'm just team. saying because Kawhi breaks down being Kawhi a two-way player Kawhi feels like he's year. the best player on the team. Yeah, but that's that's fine, Kawhi. And but you Kawhi feels like he's the best player on the team. If I was Kawhi, why do I have to focus on defense? I'm the number yeah. one guy. I spoke, focus on offense. Y'all Here's the thing about Kawhi breaks down every year being a two-way player. He should just really focus on being the same. The, how the Spurs use them. he's trying to get paid. But he's not because he's yeah, trying to yeah, get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine, Kawhi. But you're gonna break down again because you do like oh, you, like you always do. But like I said, so, why does he have to focus on people? Why does he have to focus? But just being, but just because that's more so what's gonna because Paul George and James Harden can do the effective scoring. Paul George he's the is best defender. His best season since. I'm just saying, Kawhi is the best defender best on that since team. His MVP season in Oklahoma City. Yes, that's correct, and that's why he's saying that's what I'm saying. Kawhi, she doesn't have to score as much. He should just focus playing on defense. That's he's what I'm not. saying. They have these players have egos. James Harden feels like he's the best player on the team when he's not. He wants to hold the ball. He wants to play hard. I'm just ball. saying during the regular season, if he's going for 34, let him. Kawhi, you play D, PG, or PG, you rotate with James. That's how it should be. If I'm coming from a non biased perspective, I just see a scenario where Kawhi breaks down every fucking year. So why do we have to play through him as he's going to be the same two-way player like he's not going to break down at the end of the fucking year like he always Bro, does? With you. What you're saying is logical and it makes sense, but it does not make sense in a, in a league in a team that has egos. And, that, and this is why they'll implode before anything yeah. else because I don't believe, because if they don't understand that, Bro. maybe just a little bit less of, Ka- of Kawhi so he doesn't break down Maybe just focus on playing being that. See how they played him in San Antonio. He was in the corner <laughs> shooting fucking threes. He's making, bro. I like they, the music they, y'all making, man. Bro. This is hot. Bro, bro. This is bro. hot. Fuck the Clippers. Bro, Look, they bro, all day, they, every they, day. They, they, they're signing. What's the name of the big they got from this? Uh, from what you call it? Tice. They they they're bringing Daniel Tice, thinking he's gonna be the savior. It's a backup like center role. Daniel uh, Tice is going to uh, come there and fix everything. Uh, it's a backup center role. Uh, uh, no, no, I don't think. I don't y'all, think that y'all said that shit. 
saying? I don't think that they're doing that because it's Daniel fucking Tice. Like he's a backup center. He he's he's spotting the minutes that Mason Plumley would have had. They're clearly going to go with Zubak or Plumley and or them three. This is who they like. Are they beating the Nuggets? No, but my thing is injuries it might stop the Nuggets. We'll see. But Clippers, you reap what you Man. sow. Uh, yeah. Steve Ballmer, I, I think you're arguably the best owner. You don't make great decisions, but I like the uh, way you – I mean, I like that he takes chances. I love that he takes chances. Yeah, but move's not I like bad. you take chances, but you made – you. the problem is you put you made your it bed with work. Kawhi Leonard. Bro, he, got hyped. he got hyped. He got hyped. <laughs> he got hyped. He got hyped when he takes things That's out. the thing is that, is that he, he put his time. eggs in the wrong basket he with, put his eggs, with that's, Kawhi that's Leonard. Exactly Kawhi it, Leonard is the problem. But is he put Kawhi Leonard is the main the problem. I mean, when you, when you sit there and look at what the contract – When you sit there and look at the contract terms, you knew this was like, come on, bro. Like, everything that they gave that man is like – you knew something was up. So, hey, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. And they All keep right, getting, they keep getting whoever they want, and it just don't work out. Look, man. But this ain't no bomber. This ain't they no. They don't. This is they figured out and try to make the best team they can, and you know they just don't work. have a draft pick until like twenty thirty one, I think. If you ain't getting Cooper flag, it don't really matter. So. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, great pod, guys. Uh, uh, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Jesse nodding his head is is, is is a visual that I'm just gonna. So if you're just listening to this pod, you just miss Jesse doing the uh, the LeBron James in the studio nodding his head like he just heard some hard shit right now. <laughs> yeah, he made the face too. <laughs> <laughs> if you're so if you're just listening to this, you just miss uh, Jesse nodding his head like crazy. Uh, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe helps the pod grow. Uh, especially if you're listening to all the way up until this point, you should just subscribe while you're you're still here like you like it please, please you subscribe like it, right? you got to this point you like what you're listening yeah, to yeah yeah so just go ahead and subscribe um pharrell and for jesse i'm kev we're those millennials and we're out